student. This is the fourth video of uh, a series I'm creating for this class that you are find, you're going to find in the um, welcome page. Start here. And the last one is about using AI. Now, I imagine you probably have tinkered with AI uh, from chat GPT to mid journey. Um, and you can use any of that. Obviously, it's totally up to you. I'm going to show you for the sake of today. A, um, I've used a lot of, of uh, AI, but from Dali and others, but I definitely like this particular tool. It's called Leonardo AI. And the reason why I like it is because I'm a designer, actually, and I do love the interface. Um, Midjourney, as you know, is on Discord, but it's not that, uh, to me, beautiful to look at. Look at this interface. It's spectacular. When you get in it, when you hit launch app, you find yourself in here. By the way, just for uh, your information, it's free. Means there's up to a certain point that is free. It will, uh, it all is all based on token. So it will give you, I don't remember if 150 or 250, to 150 or 250 tokens. The reason why I don't remember is because I signed up for free a long, long time ago and then I switched to paying mode. And that's why, as you can see up here, I have 9,400 token. But again, with 150, you can, it, you, to generate images, it takes only four tokens per image. So you can generate quite a few images and you have 150 per day. Or again, 250, I never remember. Uh, so it's one of those tools that you can, uh, you have to obviously go in Leonardo AI right here. In fact, you would go into a browser, type Leonardo AI right there, hit enter, and then you can download it and everything else. Um, you do have to sign up for Discord, and um, I will post actually a video right after this one on how to uh, download Leonardo. It's pretty straightforward, really. Um, so how do you use it? So once you get into this interface, you can see that you have image generation, and you have different tools up here, and then you have obviously a interface on the left, a typical menu on the left. In the personal feed is all the images that you have generated in the past. And you can see I was tinkering with VR here. I was creating strange character down here. I'm an architect, so I had created this a sketch for a residential project. And my um, client was asking me to show it to them in like one way or the other. So I was tinkering with AI to see if I could get it done that way. And then this is actually an animation. You guys know that probably know already that uh, you can also do animation with AI and it's pre pretty much fun. And then here I was trying to remember in my last video I said, hey, look, if you're depicting something, break away from reality. As you can see here, I was making a blend between elephants and turtles in a very realistic format or in a less realistic format. So you can see I've been tinkering quite a bit. I really enjoy tinkering. This is actually me playing with a photo of my son um, wanting to be uh, Donald Duck or Homer Simpson, just or Lisa Simpson for the matter. Um, by the way, one thing I love of this uh, interface is that you can put uh, a sketch or an image and use that sketch or image to generate things. Um, so let's go back in here though. What you want to do here is you want to say image generation and click on that. And you find yourself able to plug in a prompt. Uh, so for example, let's say I want to... Um, I talked about in my last video creating an old uh, rhino, and I don't know if I'm gonna spell it correct. Well, I have to. Dancing. Let's see what happens. So you just put basically a piece of text right here, and all of a sudden you can, and by the way, if you click on this interface though, you can see that you can decide if you want to bring in an image of your own or you can uh, choose which style reference you want. Uh, to be honest, the only way to remember all that, I could go on for hours, but is deciding it by playing yourself with the interface. So for example, if the ultimate image you want it to be in this style, then you would want to pick on that or kind of you want to choose this one or you want to be more painterly or you want to be more 3D CGI like you're using a 3D modeling tool. You kind of get the idea. You can choose which style you want right there and, uh, and then you can hit generate. And in this case, I'm going to use um, 10 token as you can see there. Sometimes it takes a little while, but let's see how it goes. Now notice while we're waiting, the interface here, it shows you a lot more. Like right here, we're using a preset called anime. 
but I could use any, like I can use concept art or I can use graphic design. You can use stock photography. Oh my God, look at this. Wow, that's pretty interesting. It looks like an old rhino uh, dancing, not really. And sometimes, you know, you have some seriously terrible failures, it means what you generate is nothing good. Uh, but, you know, you can keep trying. I mean, these are images that got generated like, like with, with, with Leonardo and they're pretty spectacular. So what you want to do is you want to go in the tools like image generation, motion, real-time canvas, kind of play with these tools. And then you can even go in advance and play with the, with the setting of advance. Um, remember, like some of these I haven't even played with yet, like the motion. I've done a little bit of animation, but I know it's gotten much more sophisticated. Um, one other thing about image generation is uh, you can go in and decide if you want to use elements in there. Like, you know, in this case, we use these three, but we might decide we don't. What if we regenerate without applying these styles, right? You can just go in and say, I want to try again to generate and see what comes up. And we could obviously change these settings. You can change the quality. This is a fast generation mode uh, versus quality. Oh, this is finally the rhino dancing on a tree. And you can see it's kind of actually a pretty decent image. It's a pretty nice image. And then once you, you know, decide you like it, right here you can download it or you can copy it to the clipboard or you can go in a remove background mode and then download it. And this is brand new. It's called uh, Alchemy Upscaler and allows you to uh, modify it or you can go and obviously delete it if you decide that you don't like it. The, my point is that once you have that image down here, you can decide how many images you can generate. For you, I recommend you go with two at first because it, it takes tokens for every image that you create. Um, and so uh, also here you can look at the, the history. If you, for example, go in the community feed, I forgot to tell you that, and you, for example, love this image. So you can click on that image and you can go in finding out how does it get done? How, because you could apply it to your prompt, whatever was done to this image. So this is the prompt was she possesses divine you know, with graceful uh, features. Here is the prompt the detail. You can see they're you know pretty intense. And then right here you have also this image to motion that allows you to generate a vi video or you can choose image to image. And this is the image to image interface and in which it shows you that you can start from this image but then put a completely different prompt right there, right? So you could say, okay, I'm gonna start from this image because I ultimately want to look like that. But what I wanna really see is an old lady with wrinkles against the ocean doing who knows what. And maybe you wanna close up. You wanna say, if you wanna close up, you wanna specify. Let's say you want um, complementary colors or pastel colors, who knows, whatever colors you want. Uh, but basically you input in here everything you want. Now, another thing I wanna show you that is really interesting is you can choose this thing called negative prompt as well. So you can put negative prompts that mean stuff that you don't wanna see. So you might say, if we're talking about the ocean, you don't wanna see a boat in the background, right? Cause you want, oops, you want the lady to be the, the primary element you're looking at. And then comma, you don't wanna see the sun in the background. You don't wanna see who knows what else. But this means everything that you wanna see and apparently close up needs a dash, that's okay. And here is the stuff that you don't wanna see. And then here you specify this is the image you want to start from, and you can even determine how much strength does that image has. Uh, obviously, you can uh, uh, decide if you want this thing called elements. That means you can choose if you want to add, for example, let's say, hey, I want to add this style to it, you know, be able to, to add that, and you can hit confirm. Um, it's telling me that there are multiple ones selected. Wait, this one is incompatible. Okay, so I'm going to choose this one. Yeah, it's telling me this. Oh, there it is. This is incompatible too. So, sorry, I had two that were incompatible with that particular, you know, um, uh, model that I'm using. And by the way, right up here is the models I'm talking about. So this is called Dream Shaper V6. 
And here you have all the models that you can use. If you're not sure what is the look of each model, select, select other model. And all of a sudden it shows you that this is the anime look, this is the Leonardo Lightning look, this is the photo reel, this is the Leonardo Diffusion XL, and et cetera, et cetera. So you can decide in this uh, old lady a wrinkle against the sea, which type of model you want. Like you might say, I want Leonardo Diffusion. Now remember though, Leonardo Diffusion gives you much more of a sketchy graphic look, and that's maybe what you want. I'm gonna choose that one in fact. Um, and then I'm gonna say generate and see what happens. So bottom line is you can see that there's a lot of depth to this interface. And by the way, here you can decide the size you wanna generate at. Each model has a preferred size, but let's say if the project required that you do your image uh, to be 1024 by 768 pixel, before you hit the generate button, you obviously wanna click on that. And if, if the model doesn't support it, it will give you a warning. Whoa, look at this. That's pretty cool. This is the old lady with the ocean in the background. What it did is it created the, the ocean is the hair of the lady. Wow, that is pretty cool. Sorry, I get excited so easy. But anyway, you can see that, you know, you can generate all kind of amazing stuff. Oh, I see why it did it, the hair, because we were starting from that image. You remember, we started from an image in which the woman in the image had this kind of really crazy hair all around her. So that's why it started from there, but obviously plugged in the old lady because I had that in the prompt. Again, once you have an image you like, you can go and download it, you can copy it to, and, and uh, this, if you click on this, will make it, you know, save it in your clipboard. That means you then have to open Photoshop and paste it. You can decide that you wanna unzoom the image. It will cost you some tokens, but what it means is that you wanna expand it, have maybe more of the hair. In fact, we can do it right now, since I have so many token. Um, so you have all these amazing options, even once you generated the image, to kind of tweak it and tap, touch it, retouch it. Remember this one that also allows you to remove the background. In this case, the background is the most important part. Um, but bottom line, this Leonardo to me is quite fun and interesting. All of the others are too. Like I love Midjourney. I think Midjourney is more straightforward in terms of you put a prompt, it generates things for you versus with this one, it seems to really require that you tinker with it and, and you can get a lot of things. And obviously here I can scroll through all the images that created for me and once that I, I, I'm sure which one I want, I can download it or use this upscale or you, again, tinker with these see what these do i can spend like five hours on this video but i i'm trying to always keep my videos to 15 minutes so i'm going to stop here for the sake of um leonardo but i encourage you to to play with it because as i said is could be the beginning of every one of your project is you uh, create some images in Leonardo, some for inspiration in case of the, um, the illustrator project or the in design, actually you don't need um, images because you already will have made the images. So in the last project, you're assembling stuff you already made. In the very first project, that collage, this would be extremely useful. But even in the um, object four ways or the uh, self-portrait project, those are with Illustrator, um, you can kind of get inspired by just generating some stuff on Leonardo. So just food, food for thought. You don't have to use it. Uh, it's just one more tool you can tinker with and have a blast. Remember, I want this class to be fun, okay? So hopefully I'm not overwhelming you. I'm trying to keep the projects, generally give more projects than three. I'm just trying to keep things uh, contained because I want you guys to have the time to play.